Thank you very much. I'm so glad to be here looking at uh, Artem Troitsky and with his crutches and me here with this that you know that, uh, well, you're, uh, you may not be old enough to die, but uh, it's kind of hard. It gets harder and harder to rock and roll. Uh, <laughs> Neil Young had uh, wrote a song lamenting that he couldn't get into a coffee house where you had to be under 20 called Sugar Mountain, O to be 20, to, O to be 20 on Sugar Mountain with the uh, barkers and the colored balloons. And then four years later, he wrote Old Man Singing, 24, and there's so much more. But anyway, talking about rock and roll and new music at 10 a.m. Uh, for some reason makes me feel uh, about as uh, comfortable as going uh, up to the bar in CBGB's or the Mud Club at 3 in the morning and asking for a glass of milk. <laughs> Be that as it may, uh, Tallinn Music Week, uh, which I'm very proud it takes place here and I really would like to thank the amazing and wonderful Helen Silna for doing this, and I think she deserves a... a <laughs> Tele Music Week represents a, a new way of doing music, uh, or getting music out. Uh, it's not that original because of their, this sort of showcase uh, format is uh, becoming increasingly popular, probably the best well-known is SXSW uh, in Austin, but here in our region, this is one place where you get to see new music. And why I think it's good is because this kind of, um, you know, this sort of rage against the music machine, the b music industry is bad, and all of these cliches that we've heard for 40, 50 years, in fact, this is the alternative. This is where you actually have the crowdsource model of new music, and I think it's rather well, working rather well. Certainly, I think it's a more democratic way of doing it. People come play, you decide, you like, you don't like. Um, and I think you will find all kinds of really fantastic things here. I mean, and some really good things that come out of here. Uh, most notably, I guess yesterday, the, uh, the Estonian artist Iris, who was really fantastic, uh, sort of new music, uh, who I guess isn't playing here anymore because she's been successful and has gotten a, a record contract. But she came here as a young girl, and I mean, well, she's still a young girl, especially by my standards. But anyway, um, but it's, it's an innovative way of doing things, and it's, I think it's a very highly an Estonian way of doing things, um, because I do think this is, uh, despite the wonderful old architecture that you see here, um, this is one of the more innovative places you'll see, do, trying to do new things, new ways. No one will charge you $29.99 for 24 hours of, of Wi-Fi coverage in, uh, in this country. It's all free and it's all over. Um, I remember, sort of similar to the music scene, I read an interview about a year and a half ago with a, sort of with a Silicon Valley venture capitalist who, who basically put a lot of money into startups. And then uh, there was an interview in Venture Capitalist magazine in the US, and they asked him, well, do you ever go to Europe? And he says, nothing happening in Europe, not at all. Well, maybe there's London, and then there's a little place called Estonia that's interesting. And that's... That's why uh, things, I mean, this is something that people are slowly beginning to discover. And it is an odd place. I mean, where else is the, uh, is the uh, security policy advisor for the president someone named DJ Drummy? Um, <laughs> but that's true. Um, and I would say when people say, oh, Estonia is so small, eh, well, I would say it's the opposite here, the, uh, the sort of the the distance between any two people or any three people here is much smaller than elsewhere. Everyone, in a way, knows everyone else. And so small here is not an obstacle, but rather it is uh, an opportunity to do things differently because you get all kinds of creative people together quickly. Uh, and I do th see uh, Tallinn becoming a kind of, uh, I mean, it's an odd place to, to be a music place for mu new music to come from, but, uh, you know, we have Arvo Pärt, 
Then we have Erkis Ventur, people who are really, uh, no one would have ever expected from me more in the, the more serious symphonic side of music. But then again, if you think of the history of rock and roll, I mean, you have, who would have thought everything would have changed with Liverpool or Manchester? or San Francisco in the late 60s, or Athens, Georgia in uh, the B-52s, and Pylon in the early 80s, Seattle with Pearl Jam and with uh, Nirvana, of course. They weren't the likeliest places for new music to start off, but they did. So welcome to Estonia. Now, I'd just like to talk about another thing as well, just because it really is on my mind, really irks me, and my heart is pained. <laughs> One of the things that we in Estonia, for rather self-evident reasons, value more than perhaps places where it's kind of passe and it, people are complacent, is the concept of liberty. Here in Estonia, we may not like our salaries, we may not like our leaders, we may hate our climate, but freedom is something that for fairly obvious reasons is very important to us. Uh, it is not like this everywhere, unfortunately, in the world. Now, when it comes to new music and rock and roll and where this is connected to democracy and liberty is that, of course, rock and roll being a young person's thing uh, sort of is the latest uh, reiteration of uh, basically a 200-year tradition. It began with, I mean, with uh, Lord Byron, the romantic concept of the rebel raging against that same machine. It's followed up by De Quincey, Verlaine, Rambeau, and leads all the way up to, you know, well, I, Half a rock and roll is about this. I mean, even Elvis twitching his hips was, was, a, was a rebellious act. But moving on, I mean, we have we had the uh, Jefferson Airplane singing about you know Volunteers of America. We had the MC5 kick out the jams. Then we had when it became fairly good, it's obvious that this was working, even Malcolm McLaren went to the point of inventing a Marxist rebellious band called The Clash, singing, waiting for the clamp down, get along, get along, get along, and it worked. But on the other hand, in countries that are not free, that same spirit got people in trouble. Uh, the Plastic People's Band in, in uh, Czechoslovak the Czechoslovakian socialist Soviet Republic, which was kind of the backup band for Václav Havel, got put in jail. Um, we see other artists that have actually talked about what's going on in their countries. Uh, yeah, people like Václav Havel, Hertha Müller, uh, various rock and roll people over the years here in our country, most uh, well known a punk band called Propeller. They all got in trouble because they did precisely what people elsewhere living in independence and freedom did. But as opposed to basically being against the status quo uh, where, the, where the biggest problem was being ignored, um, these people were not ignored and they ended up in jail. Uh, Ezra Pound once said, poets are the antennae of the race. I think that can be spread, uh, is in fact uh, something we, that applies just as much to rock and roll artists. And in free societies, in free societies, uh, uh, feeling that you see things, or seeing things differently uh, is, uh, is something we take for granted and the worst we can uh, face in a free society is waiting for the truncheon thing, but it never comes and you're just ignored. Um, you know, I think Jello Biafra has always wanted to be arrested, um, beginning with Holiday in Cambodia, and most recently with his new band, the Guantanamo School of Medicine, and his song, The Audacity of Hype. He still didn't get arrested. But uh, 
No, or, or the other example, which I thought was just fantastic, you can look this up on YouTube, is an, is an interview with two people who are on the same, uh, radio, uh, t same television show at the same time. I mean, they're the two guests, one of them is Prime Minister of the UK, David Cameron, the other one is PJ Harvey, who then gets up and sings, take me back to beautiful England and the gray damp filthiness of ages and battered books and fog rolling down behind the mountains on the graveyards and dead sea captains, let me walk through the stinking alleys to the music of drunken beatings. And that's what I call, you know, I mean, that's democracy. You have, <laughs> the Duke, I mean, she's, she, her, her latest album is absolutely brilliant. Uh, basically a, a sort of a, a album length protest against the Afghan war. And she can sit there and do this along with the prime minister and nothing happens. But, you know, in other places, different. People who deal with rock and roll, who say the wrong things, get in trouble. Artyom Troitsky's here with his broken leg. And, uh, you know, propellers started a riot here 30 years ago, and uh, they all got in trouble. And um, I leave you with this, is that um, I think it's something that all of us who are interested in new music should always do, is, uh, is keep in mind that in a free society, it's risk-free. In an unfree society, it is not risk-free. And, and in unfree societies, there are major consequences, uh, even for people who do something as uh, you know, fun as rock and roll. And I will leave you with that, um, just telling you that there's a band right now in Moscow who did a protest against the prime minister, uh, four women, uh, they're called Pussy Riot. And um, as a result of doing this protest, which they did in a church, uh, they were arrested. They're held without bail for two months, and they are being charged with seven years in prison. They're young women in their 20s. They have young children. So you see that rock and roll, with all the cliches of it being subversive and all of that, well, it is subversive, but some places that subversion is taken seriously. And just to see you, show you what, what can get you seven years in a Russian jail, I'll put, put this on. Thank you very much. Keep in mind, it's not all fun. Thank you. Thank you.